there is something strange happening with gold prices. Gold prices are rising faster than ever. Over the last 12 months alone, they have risen by 41%. That is something unheard of for gold prices. In fact, the current monetary policy is emphasizing the fact that gold prices are supposed to fall down since the Federal Reserve is shrinking its balance sheet. But the absolute opposite is happening. So I tried to dig down into this topic and figure out what exactly is happening with gold prices. Why are they rising so fast at levels that we haven't seen in a long, long time? And will they continue rising? or it's finally time for gold prices to collapse and fall down. If you're ready, give, give this video a thumbs up and let's dive right into it. 25 years ago, gold prices were $279 and today they are around $3,500. That is almost an increase of 1,120%. If you look at it, it seems like gold has been some of the best investments of the last 25 years. Imagine you have two people. One person buys gold with $100,000 and the second person keeps it in the bank. 25 years later, this guy is sitting on a portfolio of a million dollars while the second guy can barely buy anything with that $100,000. I mean, you could have bought a really decent house with $100,000 25 years ago. Good luck getting something today. All you can hope for is a down payment for a decent house. But gold prices shouldn't rise at all because gold is not the kind of asset that rises in value. You see, we have two types of assets in the market. We have active assets and then we have passive assets. An active asset is the kind of asset that produces something over time. Imagine a coffee shop. Now, a coffee shop doesn't sound as exciting as gold because it's simply producing coffee, but it's producing something. It is filling the demand in the market, but producing a hundred coffees a day, a thousand coffees a day, and it's making people's lives better. It is giving value to people, which means that it is an active asset. It constantly earns something. And active assets over the last 25 years have done much better than gold. Apple, for example, it's impossible to imagine our life without Apple today. They shaped the current future. Can you imagine your life without smartphones, MacBooks and iPads and App Store and Apple Music. For most people, they became the fundamental parts of their lives. And Apple stock over the last or the same period of gold has grown by 32,000 percentages, which makes it a far better investment than gold. Amazon is another example, but they have exceeded anybody's expectations by growing by 300,000 percentages. Just imagine a $1,000 investment into Amazon 25 years ago. That $1,000 probably today would worth over a million dollars. That's probably one of the greatest investments you can possibly imagine. But Amazon has done something that most people cannot possibly do. This private company suddenly owns dozens of huge planes, they own thousands of vans, and they made overnight delivery possible, something that was literally impossible even to imagine 25 years ago. Which is why these assets grow tremendously fast, since they are producing real value to the market. However, when we look at the passive assets such as gold, it produces nothing. Gold is sitting there in the corner and it shines. That is all that gold can do, nothing more than that. Which means that it is not consistently producing any kind of value for it to grow in value. Which means that given the circumstances, the gold that you had, for example, 20 years ago exact, is the exact same gold that you have today. It didn't multiply, it didn't grow, that gold didn't make more gold. In fact, the supply of gold rises by 1.5% annually, which means that it is a very rare resource. And that's exactly what makes it more valuable. That's exactly why gold preserved its value over the last thousands of years. If you pay close attention to the price of gold, you will see a very clear pattern. Back in 1970, the price of gold was $34. This is the kind of price that people cannot possibly imagine. If gold prices today would be $34, most of you would rush to buy all the gold in the world. But we no longer gonna have those kind of prices. But what is interesting here is that there are sudden spikes in the history of price of gold. For example, this is the first spike when gold prices tripled or grew like five times in a very short period of time. 
And that's because the United States untouched the dollar from gold. Back in 1970s and 80s, when the United States was going through some of the highest inflation in its history, gold prices rose again. When the dollar loses its value, gold prices rise because in relation to the dollar, gold has actually grown. Since gold is limited in supply, but the dollar can be printed by the Federal Reserve of the United States. And then there's a very long period of time when the United States was the only dominant power in the world. Nobody could challenge the United States, which means that now dollar is as valuable as gold, which is why gold prices began to fall after that. However, you see two major spikes again. The first spike was in 2012 and 2013 when it reached all-time high, and the second spike was in 2020. So historically, by looking at this graph, you see that gold has been some of the best investments somebody could possibly make. It has grown by 10,000% over this period of time. And because the United States is the largest holder of gold in the world, I guess nobody made from the, from the rise of price of gold more than the government of the United States that holds so much gold in the world that probably that is, that is literally a third of the global supply of gold. Anyways, what's interesting here is that something fundamentally changed in early 2000s that gold prices after that skyrocketed. Yes, gold prices spiked prior to that, but this growth is nothing compared to the growth that we see over here. And to understand what's happening over here is that you simply have to take a look at the balance sheet of the Fed. Now, a lot of people don't understand the importance of the 2008 financial crisis. To a lot of people, it simply was just another crisis. However, the 2008 financial crisis was so fundamentally important that it restructured the entire financial system of the world. Let me explain. It was to the magnitude of detaching the dollar from the gold. Before the 2008 financial crisis, the Federal Reserve would not intervene in the economy by printing so much money. And that's why you see that the balance sheet of the Fed was very stable at around $800 billion. It was probably like $770 billion, slightly less than that, but it doesn't matter. And every time we had high inflation, the Federal Reserve would step in, hike interest rates to bring down inflation. It wouldn't instantly work, but that was basically the main job of the Fed. Yes, it also wanted to achieve maximum employment. But that second goal was the second goal. The primary goal is that we're going to keep inflation or interest rates as high as possible to bring down inflation. And then 2008 happens and the entire economy crashes. And people freaked out to the point that literally back in the days, everybody thought that this is the end of the United States because you saw house prices going down and down and down. And if you would do the basic math, you would realize that it's simply mathematically about time that house prices would go to zero and then they would go to negative and the US GDP will literally just go to zero. That was basically the basic understanding. So the Federal Reserve takes a very important decision to start printing money to save the economy. And the balance sheet of the Fed triples overnight. In a couple of years, the balance sheet of the Fed simply triples. Because the kind of money that the Fed injected into the economy, that's something that most people at that time could not even comprehend that. And that's why you see a very close correlation between the Federal Reserve increasing its balance sheet and gold prices rising dramatically. The Fed kept rising its balance sheet up until like 2014. In fact, by 2013 or by 2014, the Fed signaled to the world that no more printing money and we're going to stop at this point. In fact, we'll try to get rid of all of these securities that we have purchased and we'll take most of this money that we have printed out of the economy. That sent a very positive message to the world and that's why gold prices after that began to drop. If you pay close attention, gold prices even began to fall for a very long time. And that correlates with the balance sheet of the Fed when they started in 2018 to shrink their balance sheet. However, here is the most interesting part. In 2020, we know what happened exactly. It literally just changed everything. And the Fed was forced again to do exactly the same thing that they did back in 2008. And the balance sheet of the Fed grew from $3.8 trillion up to $9 trillion at its peak, 
which led to the rise of gold prices from around $1,500, or even I would say it was like $1,300, to as high as $3,500. By looking at these two graphs, you can see a very clear pattern. It's not gold prices that began to rise. It's not that gold became much more valuable. Gold is the exact same gold that it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or 50 years ago. But it was the dollar that was devalued over the exact same period of time. When you have too much of something in the economy, it starts losing its value. Gold preserves its value because everybody in the world knows that we cannot have possibly much more gold. The supply of gold, it's so difficult to extract gold, which is why the supply of gold annually increases by 1.5%, which makes it so valuable. But the supply of the dollar can increase by whatever the Federal Reserve wants. And if the Fed wants that the supply is going to increase by 200% or 300% in a couple of years, then it is going to happen. So gold has no other option, but its price has to rise in order to reflect the new supply of the dollars in the market, which is why gold prices have been rising dramatically fast. But here's the interesting part is that if you look at the balance sheet of the Fed, they have been shrinking the balance sheet to almost like $7 trillion from $9 trillion. So based on this logic, gold prices are supposed to fall down. However, if you pay close attention to the recent years of gold prices, they are already or only rising. And that leads me to ask a question, what exactly is happening? If this is the logic that gold prices are supposed to work, why gold prices are not falling down when the Fed has already shrunk its balance sheet from $9 trillion to $7 trillion? And in fact, the Fed made it clear that we have to bring down the balance sheet of the Fed to the pre COVID level, and they are keeping the rates also very, very high in order to stabilize inflation. So why gold prices are not falling down? Well, the answer to that is these three graphs. Something fundamental is changing in the world. See, prior to 2020, everybody believed that United States is the global superpower, and it's not going to change anytime soon, or at least in the next 100 years or so. But the national debt kept rising dramatically, especially after 2020 and 2021. And we thought that the current administration is going to come to power and they will fix the national debt problem. That was the problem that's supposed to be fixed. And yet we have the big beautiful bill that was passed and the national debt is getting out of control. And this big beautiful bill will add an extra $5 trillion, which will accelerate the national debt, which will force the government to print more money because that debt must be consistently refinanced. And that means that more treasury bills will be created by the government of the United States, which means that if the public is not going to buy it, then the Fed will have to buy it. And if the Fed is going to buy it, then the Fed will have to create money. So that problem accelerated, which means that the supply of the dollars in the foreseeable future has no other option but to keep rising, even if the Fed does not want that. On the other side, we have multiple countries who want to retake the status of the global reserve currency and become the currency that people will rely on. But to do that, you have to back your currency with hard gold. There is no other option behind it. So we have countries that are rising. Take an example of India. India has the largest population in the world, and it's one of the largest countries geographically. Yes, 20 years ago, it was a very poor country. Today, their GDP is larger than the British GDP, and it's expected to grow to like 20 or 30 trillion dollars over the next 30 to 50 years. And as their economy is growing, it is being reflected in their reserves of gold. In 1980s and 90s, not much gold is being held by the Bank of India. Today, that number has exponentially grown to levels that we haven't seen. And this demand is driving gold prices higher. Let's take a look at another example. This is the Central Bank of Russia. Russia has been challenged in the United States. And one of the ways they have done that is by increasing their gold reserves to protect their currency. And it has been growing exponentially. Back in early 1990s and early 2000s, they didn't have much gold. Today, they are one of the largest hoarders of gold in the world. Another example is, of course, China. Back in 1980s and 90s and early 2000s, not much gold is being held. 
Today, China is the world's second largest economy and their gold reserves have exponentially grown. In fact, here's an interesting thing that China did that other countries did not do. Since the relationship between the two countries, United States and China, has been deteriorating, China, which was one of the largest holders of treasurables in the United States and is still one of the largest holders, has been massively selling their treasurables, which is devaluing the dollar, and taking that money and buying gold. Back in 2015, they sold like $300 billion of treasurables, and instead they used that money to buy gold, which is driving prices of gold higher and higher. Even though that the Federal Reserve is shrinking its balance sheet, it's not going to have a massive effect because we have so many countries with so much deep pockets buying so much gold in order to protect their own currencies. And as their GDP continues to grow, and as their economies continue to grow, what will happen to the demand of gold? It is, con it is going to continue rising, which means that the price of gold, at least in the foreseeable future, will continue rising. Will it go like to $10,000? That is very unlikely. But is it going to collapse? It might slow down to a certain extent. It might go down to certain levels, but it all depends on the United States and the Federal Reserve. If the Fed will have the tight control over the dollar, gold prices will stabilize. But looking at the national debt of the United States, it seems like gold has no other option but to continue rising in value.